right, so we're going through the rain now. We're going to pick up three in New Jersey. And funny enough, we're getting hit with the side effects of Ida. Uh, Louisiana got pretty, pretty bad, unfortunately. Sorry for those people, hopefully. Uh, oh man, I heard it was worse than Katrina, but at the same time, it's like we're getting some of the side effects from it with the rain. So I'm going to pick up three now in New Jersey. Hopefully, you know, rain holds off a little bit there. Highly doubt it. I'm willing to bet that we're gonna be loading three in the rain today, but yeah. All right, so I'm a couple minutes away. Um, I wanna let you guys know, so I got that DOT inspection the other day. It was only a level three. Uh, the guy came out, he said a bunch of nice things about the truck and started talking to me and, you know, going over all the weights and everything. And, you know, everything was good. So I was like, all right, I went over there and pulled over. And he did a level three, you know, checked all my paperwork and everything. And, you know, went over the weights, logs and all that fun stuff. And when he let me go, he's like, all right, get out of here. You're good. You know, no violations found. I'm like, awesome. So I got home. And I didn't look at the ticket until I got home and realized that he marked it as a level one, not a level three. So that's awesome. It, it goes to show you it pays to keep your equipment clean and organized. And the guy was super nice in North Carolina. And like I said, basically got credit for a level one inspection and, and passed. So that goes, and he's talking to me while on the scale, looking at the GBWRs and all that. You know, I was grossing about 25.7 something like that so i was still under the 26,000 pounds he knew the truck had a 9k gvwr the trailer had a 17k gvwr he's looking at my numbers on the scales and he was perfectly fine so that just like i said goes to show there are still some good dot officers i know there's a bunch of shit ones out there that you know but all right we're headed to bridgeton to go pick up an in-op uh with only the keys but it does not start uh because i guess there's a chip key that doesn't start so we did get She's back there. You guys can see somewhere along the lines. It is still back there. So no engine, no transmission, nothing. Just the axle and neutral. That's basically it. There's no e-brake or anything like that. So super light. So we will definitely, definitely be under 26,000 pounds on this trip. We're going to pick up an 06 Jeep Liberty and then some sort of Mazda, I believe. Four people called and canceled on it. Oh yeah, we're picking up a 2012 Ford Focus that four people called on, got it dispatched to, and then canceled. And I'm like, well, we're already running one for you. Let's run this one too, it's in the same area. So, let's get her done. Damn, she close. Hey look, here's uh, Mustang number one. Look how high the front suspension is. It's squatted because there's, uh, there's no engine in it. Yeah, we got her pretty close, look at that. We'll clear it, perfect. So we're picking up I am super impressed because dispatch said this place looks tight. Don't think I'll be able to get it. But then I come in here and look at that. He puts it right there in the open for me. Driver under the left hand mat. Left hand would be this side. Oh, look at that. There's a key. Cool. So it's an in-op because this key uh, apparently doesn't work in the ignition. It only works when you... Uh, you know, it only works to turn the steering wheel and whatnot. It doesn't actually work to start it because of a chip. So not a big deal. Truck's doing a great. So that we clear. So real quick, I want to go over this because somebody said, why are you not using safety chains? You can't. Simple as that. With a gooseneck or a fifth wheel coupler, you can get rid of these safety chains. It's, it, simple as that. There is no law that requires you to run safety chains on a fifth wheel coupler. You cannot run them and you don't legally have to run them. So just for that, nobody with a fifth wheel coupler runs these chains. If you find somebody, it's a rarity, but the majority of people know you're not gonna run them. Um, these are such a better system than a gooseneck. So I'm just gonna put it that way and you guys can see how it grabs the outer holes. So I had a lot of idiots, and I'm gonna emphasize idiots in the comments that said, oh, your rails need to go the other way. They need to, you know, face the direction of the frame rails. Well, so what they're saying is this fifth wheel hitch needs to be sitting like this. So basically I'd have to couple my fifth wheel from the side. People are really stupid and will give you some of the dumbest advice I've ever heard. And then you have the other people who give genuinely good advice. So it's like, don't listen to the stupid people. But everything's been doing good. Not any issues yet. 
aside from that, let's uh, let's get this thing hooked up. I gotta go grab some pictures of it and get her loaded up. And then we have one more in Bridgeton, like probably five, 10 minutes up the road. I don't even know yet. Um, all I know is it's in Bridgeton, which is where I'm at now. So I'll be picking that one up from the same broker and all that. I called him. I'll take it. I'll take it. No complaints there. So I went and checked. The engine bay is not the prettiest thing in the world on this thing, but the battery is dead. And uh, I was like, you know, just for shits and giggles, will it start? Like I did check the oil. There is plenty of oil in it. So I'm going to get the ramps down. I'm going to see if I can drive it up there. Uh, if I can't, obviously I'll break the winch out, but if I can drive it, that'll make my life so much easier. Nope, ain't gonna start. Let's, uh, it doesn't really, like, it feels, sounds like it doesn't have enough juice, but I think that's just, I don't know, this thing's junk. So, just grab the winch, bring her up, and we'll go from there. Alright, so this is the basic principle. What I'm gonna do is, I have these really, really long and zero gauge jumper cables, and I'm gonna end up taking, because they, they don't reach this one. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna put connectors on both of them, run them down the frame, and then bring them out somewhere in the bed area, and then I'm gonna have a connector on the neck, and I wanna do this, like I said, on all of my trailers. Uh, I wanna get another trailer, and then I, I do want like three or four trailers, so I'm gonna be doing that on all of them so that any winch that I have on said trailers, basically it'll run from the battery up the neck, zero gauge connector, just like a seven way, and then be done with it. So that's how I'm gonna be charging it. I'll have two batteries on this trailer. But in the meantime, that's the system that I have. So, gotta do what you gotta do. Oh, that's already way stronger. Look at that. All right, so this one wasn't exactly super hard. I'm gonna let the battery charge as much as possible uh, while we're at it. But this thing, when I found it, uh, it was left in uh, neutral. So I'm gonna put it in, mm, drink it. There we go. Put it in full-time four-wheel drive, lock it in park, pull the e-brake, and that way we won't have any issues. So, all right, she's good to go. Now we just gotta put our third one on here. Like I said, I will be well under 26,000 with this one. Maybe not well under, but I'll be under just enough uh, to be able to fill the tank. Next car is only 3,000 pounds according to the internet. So it's just a 2012 Ford Focus. She'll fit just nicely. Literally 11 minutes away, 7.3 miles. So I'm gonna text the guy now and go from there. All right, we made it. I'm assuming it's that one right there, that silver one, but you know, I could be wrong. Let's check. 2012 Ford Focus, doesn't give me a color, doesn't give me none of that. So the guy told me, he's like, yeah, give him, give him a tax between 30 and 45 minutes out. And I'm like, all right, you know, whatever. And I go to leave and I'm like, oh, it's only 10 minutes away. Uh, Whoops, so I'm gonna start mapping out my trip down, see which one's gonna get dropped first, second, third, and we'll go from there. Um, it is Wednesday now, so I'm gonna try to start booking stuff starting tomorrow, and we'll start trying to book stuff for like Saturday. So we shall see, let's, let's get it. All right, ETAs are very hard to give with this. I told the guy it would be like around five, and then I got there, and every in-op that I got today went super smooth, so instead of it being around five, it ended up being three. So I don't know what this guy's doing here. That might might even be him, I don't know. Um, yeah, so the guy's gonna come here and get the title and the car's actually at four, or is, is like a couple miles up the road. That might even be him there, I don't know. Um, we'll see, but that's not the focus that I'm getting, unfortunately, because that would've been perfect, but I think that's way older than 2012. I forget what a 12 looks like, but it's not that. So let's uh, hurry up and wait. All right, well, from the looks of it, he's just bringing me the car, so I'm already here, so let's get this thing loaded. As it's about, it's literally raining now. Gee, great. All right, so he was able to uh, just drive it over here. I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure I don't need to put the flip outs out. I was going to, because I haven't gotten to use them yet, but I do, I need to get the ramps out a while. So he's over there grabbing the title and the paperwork already for it and everything. So basically how we're gonna do it is the one that's going on the back. So the Ford's gonna get dropped first. Then we're gonna drop the Mustang a little bit south of it. And then this one's going over to Tampa. So we're gonna drop near Miami on the first two, which sucks because I'm going way deep this time. And then we'll head back up close to Tampa, but not exactly all the way up. And then we'll start trying to book loads. I might try to start booking stuff from the right side after I drop these two 
before I drop this one. So we'll see. All right, make sure we're centered. Looks like we are, but we will definitely check up here. Looks like we can come this way slightly. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll get it the rest of the way. Doing this on the side of the road, but we're in the grass, so we're fine. All right, well, I just, just beat the rain, but we are all hooked up. We are ready to go. 16 hours until we drop the focus. That's what be, that'll be the first one. All right, there's a damn Wendy's like right there and I can pull to the side of the road and just sit here. All right, four ways, life hack for you guys. Four ways are a park anywhere button. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna walk across the street to Wendy's right now. And there goes a state trooper. Come on, turn around, give me an inspection or he's, he's already following somebody. Get him, get him. Well, they're not gonna make it that easy, huh? Yeah, so I'm gonna go through the drive-thru with the trailer and not even care. Well, that was pretty successful. So, after about 53 minutes, I've got food and we're gonna hit the road. By the way, I just got a weather notification. There is a whole ass tornado warning. So, that's fun. That's awesome. Super excited about that. You know, tornadoes, my favorite. Absolutely love them. Just kidding. Terrible, but you know what? We got the heat going. I got uh, I got fries. So I'm gonna get out of this parking lot. We're gonna get rolling. So just traveling down 95. Um, all the idiots are out today. Four ways on. You know, all the all the BS. So cruise through New Jersey, through Maryland, through Delaware, and all three of those places. I've gotten three tornado warnings and two flash flood warnings. So you know. Not the most ideal thing in the world, but nothing more to make uh, make the day more exciting. I would say that. So, I don't know, we're at a thousand miles till the first drop, like a thousand and thirteen. So I could probably drive till like 11 o'clock tonight, something like that. So obviously I'm not gonna stop like somewhere because, well, you guys see how shitty the weather is. It's like, it's not the greatest. Uh, Maryland Scale House was closed, yay for me. So let's see how many more level ones I can pass with this truck just to make people angry. I know the camera doesn't do too much of the justice, but it is super dark out. Half these people got their four ways on. It's like, oh well, not too bad, not too bad at all. Definitely gonna be some flash flooding. Don't you guys just love tunnels? minutes and it's just adding time now at this point until I get to a pilot so uh, kind of sucks but you know ain't gonna complain just gonna sit here and 
piss on the side of the amp, the ramp. Yeah, been holding that in all day. Here we go. Hour and 45 minutes to go. Hopefully we can get there tonight. All right, I'm gonna get out now, check everything over, make sure everything's good. It did kind of pour pretty good, but cool. No issues there. There's this guy back here. Look at that, no issues. We still have clearance, and then this guy back here. You know, whatever. So, this was a trip. See, I was gonna go to the Loves, or the Pilot, which I, I think it was a Pilot. Yeah, all the straps are still on it. All the tires are good. I was gonna go to the Pilot, and it's like, the delay's like 53 minutes. Make sure all my tires, yeah, everything is good. The delay was like 53 minutes just to sit in traffic i'm like i'll just wait till tomorrow i'd rather sit in traffic tomorrow than tonight go get some fuel and we'll go from there but other than that this is all uh all done if you guys enjoyed see you in the next video have a good one